In our last video, we used content values to store plant data in our local database. But we have a problem. We're going to end up fetching 3,000 plant records from an online data source. We're going to use that to populate this table, and we are going to use that table then to populate an autocomplete text view. But the trick is, if we fetch this every time we log on to the app, we're going to save 3,000 plants every time we log on to the app, and we're going to end up with a lot of duplicates, which is unnecessary. So in this video, we're going to use something called a cursor, uh, sorry, a cursor, uh, to get data out of the table. Uh, we'll do a pretty simple cursor where we're just going to do a select, and we're going to find out what is in the database already. So here's how it's going to work. We already, in a previous video, we are already downloading a list of plant DTOs uh, from this JSON data source. We're going to iterate over those DTOs, in other words, loop over them, and we're going to ask ourselves a question. Does this DTO already exist in the database? If so, skip it. If not, insert it. But we need a very efficient way to determine if the DTO is already in the database. One option is we can take every single DTO, and we know that this DTO has a global unique identifier. We can query the database and say, hey, do you have a record with this global unique identifier? The only trick is for 3,000 plants, that means we're going to be making 3,000 queries every time we run this, and that's quite a heavy load to make on our database. Now, while you don't need to be an, a Java developer to do Android programming, there are some times when it pays off to have a bit of development experience, or at least some, uh, some familiarity with the Java collections. So there's one called a set, and a set uh, is a case where we say, okay, uh, this is a collection of information. Uh, we'll use a hash set in our case. This is a collection of information, and everything in this collection is unique. If we try to insert a duplicate, it will just insert over the other one. So it's a very efficient collection. Uh, also, because with the hash set, it uses a bit of magic to find out whether something exists in that set or not. If that doesn't make sense, don't worry about it, uh, because we're going to look at it with a hands-on example. But basically, let me summarize what I just said. We're going to get all of the GUIDs that are currently in the database, and we're going to put that into this thing called a set. The set will keep them all unique. We'll keep all unique GUIDs together. And the set is very efficient It's saying, hey, does this item exist or does it not exist within the set? It's very efficient at doing that specific operation, determining whether or not something exists in that set. So what we need to do then is we need to create a cursor. Then we need to create a query uh, where we're going to use this cursor and we're going to just pull out the GUID from each of the rows in the database. If you've used a result set in old school JDBC SQL before, uh, cursor's a very similar idea. We're just iterating over one row at a time. So let's have a go at it. I'm going to go into my offline plant DAO, and I am going to make a new method called fetch all GUIDs. So again, give myself some space so we can see it here on the screen. And we're just gonna say public set integer fetch all GUIDs. Remember that thing set, as I mentioned, um, very efficient it, it saying, hey, having a collection of items and simply saying, hey, does this exist in this collection? And I'll say, uh, years ago, I taught a course in uh, data structures and algorithms, which in included a, a big exploration of the uh, data structures in Java. And it was probably one of the more fun classes I ever taught, to be honest with you, and one that has benefited a lot in mobile development just because we really have to eke out every inch of memory we can. We really have to make sure we're fast and efficient and we have a well-running program. And data structures and algorithms are a good way to do that. Uh, none, nonetheless, we'll save that for a future lecture. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is declare the return type. Set is an interface, and we're saying integer because we're keeping those GUIDs in, and the GUID data type is an integer. It's not very obvious to see up here, uh, but the GUID is an integer. 
Okay, so I'm going to say set integer all goods equals new hash set integer. Now, hash set is a class that implements the interface set. So that's why we have it uh, set up as it is here. The interface on the left, as we commonly do, variable type tells you what methods you're allowed to call. And then the class on the right, uh, uh, on the, the object type is the class. Uh, object type tells you what happens when you call those methods. And that's the definition of polymorphism. Okay, now let's make some SQL. We're going to say string uh, SQL equals uh, select. Now remember we used our constants. And remember, it was a little extra work to begin with, but now it's paying off. So we're going to say select GUID from plants. So select GUID from, and then, whoops, plants. And that's it, really. <laughs> that's our SQL statement. Okay. Assemble SQL statement. Okay. And now we're going to say, okay, uh, run the query. Okay, for this I'm going to say get readable database. Readable database means, okay, we're not going to change anything. Let's not put any locks on this. Let's just fetch. Uh, raw query, and then we're going to pass in the SQL, and then for the next argument we're going to pass in null. Uh, if we had a parameterized SQL statement, the second argument would be parameters, and the parameters would be question marks in our SQL statement. Uh, that's useful if we're using a WHERE clause or something where we're saying, give me only certain GUIDs. But in this case, we're saying, give me all GUIDs. Okay? Now, this is going to return that cursor we were talking about earlier. Uh, and so we could do all the work to manually assign the cursor to a local variable, but why bother when we can let Android Studio do it for us? Control-Alt-V, and yep, you know what? This will work. Uh, so it just assigns the uh, assigns the return return statement to a cursor. Okay, now I'm going to take care of a couple things now before I forget. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take care of our return because you see we have a squiggly here. We're missing a return statement. Uh, squigglies make me nervous, so I'm going to say return all goods. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say cursor dot close. It's easy to forget to do that. So as soon as you create a cursor, be sure and close it, and then put all of the guts of your uh, data manipulation between the definition of the cursor and closing the cursor. I forgot to do this once. I'll be honest. I forgot to do this once, and uh, I got when I and it actually got out to the App Store, and then I got I tried my own app out and got a an issue where it, it ran out of. Uh, basically uh, connections to the database or, or uh, I forget what the exact error message was but lesson learned always put the cursor here and make sure you close it outside of an if test so that you always close it not just some of the time okay next did we get results we're gonna say if cursor dot get count as greater than zero that means we got results okay open curly close curly and then we're going to say move to the first result cursor dot move to first okay and now what we're going to do is iterate over the results okay uh, we'll say while not cursor dot is after last i know that's kind of a strange syntax but we're just saying continue to do what's between these curlies that I've just defined until the cursor is after the last row, okay? Now, uh, another thing, as soon as we do that, we want to make sure we bump the cursor to the next row. If we don't, and yes, I've done this before as well, if we don't do that, we're going to end up with uh, in, uh, basically a, a, an endless loop situation. So as soon as we put a while test like this, let's go to the bottom of the while block, the while block is this area defined by the open curly down to the closed curly. Let's go right before that closed curly and say cursor dot move to next. Okay, so I will just now put just put a comment. Go to the next row. Normally I wouldn't comment this frequently because 
the code is self-descriptive in some ways, but this being our first try, uh, it's worth adding a few extra comments. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say cursor dot get int. Why int? Because the only thing I'm selecting here is an integer, and that's GUID. So cur uh, cursor get int. Now the next thing is, uh, it's fairly straightforward in this situation to know which column to pick, because guess what? We only have one. So I'm going to say cursor.int get int zero. A safer way to do this might be to say cursor.get column index and then pass in GUID. That works, you know, honestly, that works just as well. What that is saying is if we have multiple columns returned, I want to get the index, I get, want to get the position of the one that is GUID. That's really handy if we have a whole bunch of things up here in our select. In this case, we only have one, not a big deal. Okay, get the value. Now, what are we going to do with this value? Well, I'm going to do an alt enter, uh, introduce local variable. That's the same as a control alt V. And I'm going to save this as just uh, GUID. Uh, I haven't already used that, have I? No, I have not used lowercase GUID yet. Okay, save that as GUID. And now I'm going to say all GUIDs dot add, and we'll say GUID. And terminate with a semicolon. And essentially, after that, we're finished. Now, Java has auto boxing and auto unboxing where it can convert an int to a uh, capital I integer, as we see here. I feel safer if I do it myself. And, and this is redundant and not necessary, but integer dot value of uh, what that's going to do if you take a look at the signature is take the primitive type and return the class type. Integer dot value of GUID. Old school, that's how we always used to do it. Okay, so take a look at what's happening here. I'm going to add one more comment. Add this GUID to our collection of GUIDs, or to our set of GUIDs. Well, let's go ahead and be official and call it set. Okay, so look at what's happening here. Uh, we have our fetch all GUIDs method. We declare the return value, uh, which is a collection, a, a set more specifically. We return that set at the bottom of the method between those two lines. We create a query. We run the query. We iterate over the query results. In many cases, this might be uh, 3,000 results. Uh, and then we're going to uh, move to the first row. We're going to iterate until we reach the last row, or uh, actually just beyond the last row. Each time we iterate, we're going to move to the next row. And we're going to take the GUID of the current row, and we're going to save it into this collection uh, that we are returning down here. So at this point, we're in good shape. Uh, we have used the cursor to get some values back. There's certainly a lot more we can do with the cursor. We can populate an entire plant DTO, uh, but at this point, I think we've covered enough for a cursor. In our next series of videos, what we're going to do is we're going to get a count of all of the plants that are in the database, so we can tell if it's been initialized or not. And also, we are going to take this collection of plant DTOs, iterate over them, and then say, hey, does this already exist in the database? If, if so, skip it. If not, enter it. So that's what's coming next. I'll see you then.